Hey Destiny, how you doing today? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm great. I'm great. Appreciate you for coming to the Million Dollar Basement. Coming okay. to get an interview. Stepping in, stepping in. Jersey in the motherfucking building. Already know. Okay, okay. What part of Jersey you from? I'm part of New Brunswick. Brunswick. Yeah. So is that like north south? <laughs> like had Central. A, oh, that's like dead in the middle of the dead state. Dead ass in the middle. Okay. Middle when you came? County. When you came to Atlanta? Um, I've been down here for like three years now. Okay. Since August, I came down here in 2019. Okay, what brought you down here? Um, hmm. It's a funny story. I used to like watch this show when I was younger called like Single Ladies. It was like Lisa Ray, Stacey Dad, all that shit. So they had like, uh, they kind of emphasized that Atlanta was like a place of like black entrepreneurship, um, a city life. You know, but there's yeah. like, you know, slower areas. Like, being from Jersey, I'm close to New York, so I knew I didn't want to live in New York. It's too much city. Like, it's too much going on everywhere. So, I was like, yo, they got, there's a woman, like, a black woman with her own business, and it's another black woman with her own business. Like, you don't see that every day. So, I'm like, yo, that's the place that I need to be. And ever since then, I'm like, I have to go there. I never, I never even been to Georgia before I moved here. Oh, so you just said, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Like, oh, and I did it up. full throttle. You came by yourself or you came with a friend? I came with a friend. Okay. Yeah, we ended up being roommates and everything. One of my good friends. The they time. had the same mindset. Fuck it, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> she actually, like, really motivated me to make that step for myself. Because, like, I always wanted to do it. But, you know, like, you're just afraid. You don't really know things. I was still living with my mom. I didn't really know what it was like to like really like be an adult and like the day to day shit that you need to shit get out here. <laughs> but like I didn't know none of that. I just kind of just said fuck it. I found my apartment. I got approved. I packed up my car. And I was out. <laughs> <laughs> out. <laughs> oh, that's lit. That's lit for sure. How long have you been doing music? I've been doing music for about seven years now. Okay. Yeah, but I want to say I kind of been into it my whole life though. You know, my um, uncle was a musician, and he played in our church band all the time. And I just remember like jam sessions and just hearing music. But I, I sung first, like. You in choir at the church? Huh? You in the choir? No, I was scared. So you just sang on your I own? I just sang on my own, but I couldn't sing. <laughs> but I wanted to be a singer so bad. I didn't think I was a rapper. Like I didn't think I had the voice. I didn't like my voice. And then it wasn't until like freshman year of college. Um, I just started like playing, like just turning beats on and like playing with different sounds. And it was one day I was rapping and I'm like, oh, okay, I think I can do this. So as far as like wanting to rap, was there an artist that kind of like swayed you into like finding your style and all that kind of stuff too? Yes, definitely. Um, little Kim, I, I kind of studied her a lot um, when I used to... I look up her music and stuff and her cadence and how she would control the stage when she come on and her voice would never like really change it was very like she was very petite but her voice was like masculine and I knew like if I rap like it, it just to me it just has to feel a little bit masculine like I gotta have some stern in my voice like no, I feel that. so niggas can listen <laughs> yeah but yeah definitely Lil Kim Nicki Minaj for sure when I was in middle school uh, Foxy Brown, Queen Latifah, Lauren Hill. Y'all be trying to sleep on her. She's really a rapper, not just a singer. And yeah, those are kind of like my my female rappers. I kind of studied a lot. Uh, Inspired by in a sense. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. Yeah. So when did you drop your first song ever then? I'm still high. You asking me questions like, well, that's time dates. <laughs> I mean, I want to know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, like, how long ago was it when you released damn, your first single? I think, cause even when I started rapping, it took me a year to drop a song. So I want to say I dropped my first song in 2016. Okay. Okay. What's it called? It was called. Oh my god! It was the Panda Remix. <laughs> 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 and it was another friend of mine um, who was also a female rapper, and we actually did the Panda song together. I sound garbage, <laughs> like completely garbage, but the bars was hitting though. I just didn't have the voice yet. Like I probably would re I would probably redo that song, 
because like my voice is different now because I'm more confident in it and everything. But that was the first song I dropped was the Panda uh, Panda Remix. So tell me a little bit more about your latest project. Matter of fact, tell me about your latest uh, single, your Jumpman Freestyle. Damn. Okay. Uh, my latest single, Jumpman Freestyle, that was kind of something I wanted to do because I haven't dropped anything in a while. Um, you know, life and life and. <laughs> and um, I don't know, like I heard the beat, you know, I put my mom's voice. Unfortunately, I, you know, I lost her a few months ago. Oh, man. That's and I Thank you. And it would just kind of just get me back into my bag. Like, I'm really the bully in the skirt. Like, for real. Right. <laughs> um, and that track is just like, it's hard. <laughs> it's like, from the second I come on, like, oh boy, try act was smooth. Like, he wasn't begging for pussy in person. Like, you know? So, yeah. um, that was just a dope little freestyle put together. It's like, barely two minutes. Um, but it's fire. Definitely. But my my last project I dropped, it was actually an album. It's called Turn Me Up. It's on all platforms. Y'all go get that. Okay. I produced my first track on that. Oh, that's what's up. So that was like really fire. That's when I'm like, yo, like I like that more authentic feeling. Like I like to be part of the process with anything that I do. So to like make a song and create it from scratch. Like I didn't literally like you know, make make the beat. Right. But I was working with the producer and I'm telling him sounds yeah, that I hear in my head. And you know, and we put it together and it was like some real old school funky. I wanted something like my uncle, you know, on the bass with the guitar. Like right. it's, it's called Party. And Turn Me Up was just kind of a project where I wanted to show my versatility. Mm -hmm. I got some singing songs, I got rapping songs, got turn up songs, like I'm, I feel like anytime I do something, I don't want to do the same thing again. Like if I drop a twerking song, the next song gonna be completely different, like completely different. Right. So that's how I kind of love music because you can just kind of play with different stuff every time and have a good time. I like that. I like yeah. that. So looking back to when you made your first song and to where you are now making music, what would you tell yourself if you could go back and talk to that version of you? What would you tell yourself? That's a good question. Um, I would just tell myself don't listen to anybody else you know as a female rapper um, the most consistent thing that you hear from everybody is oh like you got to do this kind of sound oh like you got to do this like oh this is what's going to get people going this is what's going to you know right and try to categorize you try to categorize me and there was times that like I fed into that mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like when I first came out I felt like I was just listening to some, one of my old songs before. That shit hard. Yeah. But it's more like a, a conscious kind of rap song, but it's dope as fuck. But I'm really spitting, and I'm like now I'm trying to find that merge in between the old artist that I was and to the new artist that I am and stay true to that. So like I would just tell my old self, don't listen to nobody else. Continue with, with the path that I was going towards. Um, and I'm like, I'm not upset, like, you know, I did certain songs, but sometimes when you do certain stuff, like, let's say, the sexy shit, everybody knows, like, you know, you put out a, a sexy song, oh, niggas like, oh, yeah, that shit hard, oh, now niggas listening to you. But then, like, now I drop that, then I drop something else, because you feeling this, so you gonna feel this. You know, so I would just stay true to myself, I wouldn't listen to um, too much of what people had to say, I would've just, like, did what I wanted to do. Okay. Yeah. Now... What do you think five-year-old Destiny would think about current Destiny? That she fucking dope as shit. Hardest. <laughs> That's what's up. That she dope as hell. Like, you really, like, you really made it. You know, you strong. You're independent. Um, and I think that's fire. And you, when you're younger, you don't really see the kind of woman that you would be in life. And the fact that I'm sitting here today, and if the five-year-old me could see me, she'll be really proud of me of where we come, where we came from, and where we are now. And where you going? And where sure. we going? Yeah, for and sure. Don't stop. It definitely don't stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm feeling good. Feeling feel good? good. I feel good. How you feel? I feel great. So how'd you, how'd you come across the Million Dollar Basement? Um, it was actually an artist that I followed down here. She's dope. Um, Holly Hills. Um, I followed her and I saw that she did the Million Dollar Basement and I saved it. And I'm like, 
I'm gonna go book them one day because I like the. I can see y'all working together. Yeah, sure. and I, we were trying to uh, get up, but we just never could get up with each other. Um, yeah, facts. Uh, yeah, and I was just like, oh, this shit hard. So I saved it, and I was like, you know, whenever I get my thoughts together, what I want to do, I'm gonna hit them up, and that's what happened. And I was like, yeah, I'm fucking with the million dollar basement. Yeah. For sure. For sure. <laughs> we fucking with you definitely. Period. So. And <laughs> duly. <laughs> Nah, but we appreciate you for real coming to tap in with us and do yeah, this interview know. for us. You want me to do the outro now? Yeah, you can. Okay. What's up, y'all? She got the money sign. You know the motherfucking vibes. And I'm checking in the million dollar basement. Period. Jersey in the building. <laughs>